Hi everybody, welcome to a new project. This is another design team project for Country Craft Creations using Graphic 45 Safari. Is it Safari Adventure? Safari? I don't know. I love it. Um, you can get all your supplies there. I am using the collection. These are the pieces I had left from the last Safari collection, as well as some black artisan cardstock. And this is a pad folio. It's quite large as you can see. It is 12 by oops, I stabbed it. Nine and a half. And it's very simple, quick, easy to make. We're gonna do this hopefully in one video. And you can see it just opens up. There's a place for a standard eight and a half by eleven pad. Um, you can adjust it for whatever standard pad size you have. It's got a couple of large pockets and a little business card holder. Uh, here because I designed it to sort of take around with me. Um, I'm going to be house hunting and I thought it would be handy to to make some notes, sketch out little um, areas of the houses I'm looking at and then um, place any brochures, business cards, things over here. So super easy, super quick and fun to make and uh, that just slides out. You can see so you can swap it out like that. And it's plain on the back. You could add whatever embellishments you want, but since I actually intend to make pretty good use of this, I left it pretty plain and flat. Um, so that is pretty much it. I'm gonna warn you ahead of time that um, I sort of was making this up as I went along, so I may futz around a little bit during the tutorial. I did make a mistake when I was putting in uh, the spine piece but I will make a note and tell you to stop and not follow along and do what I do. Cause I did catch it and, and then tell you what to do, but um, you can either do what I did because it actually ended up kind of fine, but um, just watch out for that little bit. Okay, so again, everything you can get here at Country Craft Creations, I will link it down below. I do not have a cutting guide for this one, um, but I do give you all the measurements as we go along. So. Stay tuned, let's get started and make this. All right, so we are going to wrap the pieces for our folio. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And by that I mean, we're gonna take just the edge and use our seam binding to cover it, okay? So you're gonna take your two pieces, which you're going to need, uh, nine and a half, this is chipboard, nine and a half by 12. And you will need two, it's a medium weight chipboard from Country Craft Creations. And on both sides, you're going to put a piece of quarter inch tape, score tape, on the short sides and one long side, and then on the matching long side and two short sides on the other side. You can use glue for this if you want, I'm using my score tape. Get this out of the way. And I have my seam binding. This is black seam binding from Country Craft Creations also. This is a um, design team project for Country Craft Creations. And we are using Safari. You should have just seen right before we started with this in the same video, the little walkthrough. All right, so on one side, you wanna peel back a little bit of your score tape. And you want to use the line of the score tape to help you guide your seam binding. You do not need to be exact. It is going to be covered. Um, and you want to be either right on that line or just in from that line. It's all right if some of it sticks out because it's not going to be seen in the end. It's just to sort of help guide you uh, with getting your seam binding down. And hold it, of course. That's why I like to use the seam binding rather than the glue because the edge of the tape, I mean, that's why I like to use the tape rather than glue because the edge of the tape will help you guide your laying down your seam binding. And come along to up here and the corners can be a little tricky and I did one of mine pretty badly, but it still looks fine. Sorry, I gotta pull it over here where I can see it a little bit. Okay, and I am, up to this piece of tape, and I'm just going to peel that back a little. Whoops! Get it very straight. Look at that. Pulled up, pulled up a little of my um, um, chipboard. It's one thing about the uh, tape is it's strong. Okay, here we go. And now I'm going to pull back just a little of this. And what I'm going to do is just. Um, 
sort of lift it up. Sorry, I'm going to fold it under when I lift it up, so it's sort of sort of like that. I don't know if you can see that what I did, like that. And then back down this way. Like I said, this this is fiddly. Yikes. All right, let's try that again. I'm gonna go all the way to the end because I can't remember how I did it to be perfectly honest. And then just sort of rotate it around. There we go. Again, don't worry too much about it. Just, you know, do the best you can, get it as neat as you can because it's not gonna be like all this mess that I made right here, it's not gonna be visible in the end and then this will just fold over. All right, so hopefully I can make that more clear when I get to the next corner and I'll do a better job. Fortunately, you only have to do this a couple of times. And the other thing you could do if you want is just go all the way to the end, cut it, start a new piece and go down. You'll have a raw edge, but just take some of your art glitter glue or whatever glue you're using and just run it along the raw edge and that'll seal it. All right, so. Okay, so there's that one. You can see I got really crooked right there, but again, this is gonna be matted right pretty much to the edge, so it's not going to be noticeable. This is really just to make sure that the, the raw edge is not showing. And you can skip this step entirely if you want, leave it showing. Or you could use black chipboard, um, which I didn't want to do because I, it's not something everybody has in their stash. You can get it, but right now you might not have it, and I didn't want to use something that you didn't have. You could also just use a Sharpie, a black Sharpie, to darken that edge. So I'm just sort of folding it around at the corner. Yeah, that's going to be fine. Now the score tape's um, one half inch thick. So when we fold it over, it's not going to cover the tape because, you know, by the time you fold over, that eats up some of it. Okay, there we go. But that's fine because again, this is going to be matted and you'll never see that. Okay, so now we're going to turn it over off this tape. I'm just going to pull the whole piece off and then I'm just going to pull this up and over. Again, you want to make it nice and neat along the edge but beyond that you don't really have to worry about it too much. This is the corner that I kind of did a bad job on. Pick it up and see if I can Okay, so I just sort of folded everything in at the corner and tucked it over. If you make quilts, you can just sort of remember how you bind your quilt corners, and that's pretty much the same thing. The other thing you can do is just sort of lift and fold, and then you get a lot of it done at once. That's probably what I should have done in the first place. Okay, and now we're going to do that. Side. Go. Okay. And again, these corners are far from neat. However, it doesn't matter. You will hardly see them. This one's kind of clunky, but that's all right. And then trim the extra off, just like that. Okay. Cat here. Jolly was here earlier. Okay. All right, you want to do that for both of your pieces, front and back, okay? All right, All right. and I wanted to see, so you can't even tell which one it was. This is the one that I didn't do very well, and I just, or not that I didn't do it well, I just did it differently. I went to the end and just cut it, like this one goes up to here and then this one covers it. So I had a raw edge here and I just took a little glue, put it there, dries clear, made it nice and neat. So if you want to do it that way, it's perfectly fine and easier probably. 
All right, I will be right back. I'm going to gather a couple of things and we will um, put this together. Okay, I am back and I have our little spine piece, which is... It's hard to cut them these small, so it's not really exact. It's like 5 eighths by 12, okay? And I'll put my covers out of the way here for a minute. Now, you could wrap these if you wanted or cut it out of um, black or whatever, same as we talked about a minute ago. But what I really wanted to do was use my artisan cardstock. And of course, this is 12 inches long. So in order to wrap the ends so that they're covered, I need a piece longer than 12 inches. Um, to get that, I could use two pieces pieced together, but the easiest thing to do is gonna be to just cut my piece on the diagonal, and that'll give me a piece longer, okay? So what I want you to do, and you'll see I've marked it in little white dots here, is measure down two inches from the corner in each direction and make a dot, and then on the opposite corner, diagonally opposite corner, do the same. Okay, and then we're just going to join the dots to cut. And I don't know if I explained in the walkthrough that I know what I want to make with this, but I'm kind of winging it. Like, I don't know how I'm even going to cut this because it's not going to fit in my cutter. And I don't have, I do have my big cutter, but even that I don't think is going to fit. So let's see if we can just join our marks. I have a longer ruler. Hang on. Yes, I do love this ruler so much that I have it in both lengths, which honestly it's only because I accidentally bought the long one first and then realized it was too long. So I'm just going to join with a pencil line my dots. scissors. I will use scissors. I was thinking of using my rotary cutter, but you might not have one. So I am going to use scissors. should use big scissors. But oh, hang on, I do know where they are. Hang on. Okay. All right. And I'm going to pull this up where I can see it so I can cut along the line and I'll be right back. going to check. Yeah, so then I'm just going to cut, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to cut off the triangle. Just make things a little neater. Okay, then I need this piece to be 13 inches long. eyeball that because my, um, actually you know what I can do, hang on, I'm just going to get out my handy long ruler here and make a mark at 13. center this you can eyeball it and I've got already as you can see I've already put tape on it getting the back of the tape off okay there we go all right and then I am just going to like I said eyeball the center here it doesn't matter too much there we go and I'm just gonna whoop, that's my... I have all of my stuff is kind of in a 
tither right now because while I was off camera, Holly came up to join me and was just getting into everything. Okay, there we go. Right, Holly's my cat, if you're new here. She's one of my two cats. Okay, so then you can see I just folded that up and over like that. And we're gonna do the same here. This end, up and over like that. Okay, like that, okay? And I'm just gonna put some tape right here to hold that in place. Anyway, so I spent the last several minutes basically rescuing things, snatching them out of her jaws. I also seem to have cat hair everywhere. She's a long hair, so. Decide whether I, I think I'll use if I can find it quarter inch tape down this side. None of this works. This project will never see the light of day, but so far I feel like it's working. Okay, there we go. Alright, so we're just gonna peel back. I don't know why I always try to do that with my fingernails when I have a tool that'll work perfectly well right here. that up and down. Okay, and then these can stay where they are for now. Spacing. I'm going to run a piece of quarter inch tape right along the edge of this little spine piece. You can eyeball this if you want, but this will help if you have it in place. So I just cannot tear score tape. Look at that, what a mess. Oh my goodness, that was my stomach growling. If you could hear it, I'm sorry about that. I did have breakfast. It's uh, early in the morning. Things have been a little, little hectic this week. Sorry if I've been a little MIA. My sister and I were doing some work here in the craft room. We got it painted and freshened up a little bit. And then um, I had an interview at work. It's my, not a new job, but at my same job same employer for a new position. So I was kind of prepping for that. All right, so I'm just gonna burnish those. Okay, so now we have a nice neat top and bottom edge. Everything is um, taped. And what we're going to do now, I should have said, you could make this wider if you want, if you want to have a wide contrasting uh, paper, you know, on your cover, like a wide border here. You know, if you're going for that look, which looks really nice, you could use that paper that looks like leather, be awesome. You can make this as wide as you want. Um, I just made it this wide because it's wide enough and I'm gonna cover it. You know, you're not gonna see that much of it. So, these ruler out of the way. This is the 18 inch ruler. It's the same as my favorite blue ruler. 
This will look down below to the Amazon link for it. But as if you've been watching for a while, you know my eyesight is just terrible. So this ruler is a godsend for me. It's just everything is so clearly marked and easy to see. Somebody linked it. I don't know where. I saw it on Facebook in some group. It might have been Country Craft Creations. Uh, talked about how much they love this ruler. And I was like, I need that. So I'm just checking to see if there's a side I prefer. This is the better side, so I'm gonna make this the front. In terms of better side, I just mean I did a better job on the corners, which always seems to be the criteria. So what we're going to do is just lay this on top of this, with the raw edge in and butting up against our little quarter inch spine there, okay? So what we're gonna do is, I think I'm just gonna fully tape this. Do I wanna do that or do I want, yes. Or do I wanna use glue? No, I think I'll use tape. All right. I'm not too, too worried about getting the tape right to the edge because I am going to mat over it. So if it's not uh, perfect, it's fine. But you definitely don't want to go over top and bottom because you won't be able to hide it. Okay, and then we might as well go ahead and do this side as well. I'm using three-eighths inch tape here. going to remove only the two three eighths inch pieces leave that quarter inch where's my little tool and I'm just gonna pull the whole thing off oh we should have burnished that really hang on let's burnish I'm going to line this up top and bottom, and here, I've got some loose threads here that I want to trim. They'll be hidden eventually, but it'll just be easier to line them up. And you want to line them up right along the edge of that quarter inch tape that you left. And drop it down. Okay, just like that. Now we're going to repeat that on this side. Again, you're going to put the raw edge in the side you didn't wrap. Trim any extra if you've got it. top and bottom and right along the edge of that quarter inch just like that okay turn it over and burnish it okay looking good all right I've got a little bit showing there all right oh I almost pulled those off okay so then you want to just gently, you're gonna do this again, but you know, just work that fold a little bit. And by leaving that full quarter of an inch, it gives you a bit of a, a fairly flexible spine, which you want. That's good. Okay, 
good. Okay. I am liking it. Okay. So now we need um, to cover this. Okay. And what we're going to do, and I don't, th we may need to use another full piece because I don't think these are going to be long enough. Yeah. If I cut from that, it's not going to be long enough. So we're going to cut another long piece from our sheet. I think, do I want to do it that way? Or do we just want to use a regular? No, I do want to cut it that way. Okay. Sorry, talking to myself. So what I'm thinking, because I did it this way. Okay. I'm going to tell you how I want you to do this. I can't show you because I just did it differently. But what we did, if you remember, we cut this long, folded it over, and then attached it. Okay. What I want you to do is, you know, leave that half inch bit hanging over. Don't fold it over. Attach the covers, then fold it over, and it'll cover, it'll look neater. Okay. So I am going to have to come up with a way to make mine look neater that you will not have to do. So you will have wrapped so that this half inch is wrapping over and then you can just put a straight piece here to cover this. Okay? Does that, I hope that makes sense. It's kind of the way we always do covers, just in miniature. Um, I am, however, going to have to come up with a solution. Which I think I'm just going to put my piece straight to, and it's just not going to be as neat right there. But I don't like that. I'm going to have to do something else. Because I did that wrong. Now, I could take this off, because it's all done with score tape, but I'm not going to, because I don't have time for that. Okay, so here... All right, so what I'm gonna do to fix my mistake, and if you've gone ahead and done it the same way I have because you didn't watch ahead and I forgot to warn you, what I'm gonna do is do the same thing. I'm gonna cut, um, you know, cut my piece down the diagonal, but what I'm gonna do is leave the full points. I'm gonna make it a little wider. I'm gonna leave the full points and then fold those points out or in, because I can always change the direction if I need to. And then it'll almost look like a decorative element rather than a mistake. Sometimes when you do something wrong, you just need to own it. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so last time we made our dots two inches. So this time I'm gonna put my dots at the four inch mark instead of the two inch marks. Probably more than I need, but like I said, I'll just, I'm just gonna own that I made a mistake and move on. Like I guess I'm kind of making this up on the fly. There's very rarely a mistake that you can't fix. It's just sometimes you have to accept that things are gonna go in a different direction than you thought they were. Although in this case, it's really a moot point. It's most of what we're doing here is not even going to be seen, but it would bother me to know that it was not, not neat there. So I'm going to make it neat. And, oh, I don't want to use a, red, a white pen. That's not a good idea. Pencil. You could use the white and just put it to the inside. But that's just a white... Uh, gel pen of some kind that I use. What is that? I like, I really like these. It's the Uniball Signo white pen. These are handy to have around. If I remember, I'll link it down below. They're really good for journaling on dark papers too. Okay, let's go ahead and cut this. Okay, so then 
what we're gonna do is glue this down, just like so, and then fold this to the outside. Does that make sense? I think it does. All right, so what I'm doing, I wanna center it. And then take my pen, my pencil, Same down here, center it. And then I want to center it top to bottom. I'm looking to see how far, and what I'm doing is trying to figure out how, where I need to put, how and where I need to put the adhesive. All right. So I think the best thing to do is going to be to put adhesive everywhere except in the points on this piece. And to do that, I don't have any, oh, I should have a score tape sheet somewhere. That would work. I'm gonna use tape because I don't know where my sheets are. All right, so I'm putting tape on here and I just realized that I forgot to start my audio recording for this video. And so I just started it. Hopefully the video's better now. Whoops, hey Holly. Speak of the devil. Oh no, you can't tear that off, honey. I need it. Well, you guys usually get to see Jolly. She was here earlier, like as soon as I sat down, Jolly was right here. She likes to be with me doing this stuff. But she also likes to take naps in the morning, so I think she's wandered off to take her nap. And Holly's going to take hers right here. Hey, boo-boo. Oh, she just collapsed. Did she just collapse? Yeah, that's sharp, so be careful. And you could use glue for this but I am gonna use my tape. And it's a little tricky right now because I have an obstruction. Okay, we are back. I have no idea how long it's even been since I recorded because all kinds of real life things got in the way. I cat hair all over this because Holly was lying on it. <sighs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I've made my, my lines on the sides to help me guide it side to side and I'm just kind of gonna eyeball top to bottom try to make it as straight as I can that looks pretty good and again if you had done the spine the way I told you how to do it not the way I did it you can make this much easier by just cutting it straight and putting it down but if you did what I did you can do this or if you like the way this looks in the end That, that looks pretty good. I think. Hang on. Maybe more like that. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is pull this back. Try not to move it. Let's get that first piece down just to help keep it from sliding around while I do the rest. Okay, here we go. 
And I'm going to have to immediately put all those in the trash. Otherwise, Jolly will be all over those. I kept finding her in the last few days chewing on these things. And I'm usually pretty careful about getting rid of them. I don't know where she's finding them. I wouldn't be surprised if she's figured out how to use the score tape to get them herself. Okay. There we go. Burnish that down really well. And as I just said, I'm going to get rid of all these. Be right back. then needs to fold to the outside. But before I do that, I'm just going to give it a little burnish here, right where it's going to fold, if I can find it. This could actually be the inside too, it doesn't really matter. Whichever, which, wherever you want these little triangles to be. And if it is going to be to the outside, you could use a contrasting uh, paper. Or, like I said, you could just do it the right way the first time and then you wouldn't have to deal with this. Oh my goodness, Holly was up here. She's my long haired cat, and there's cat hair all over. Just burnishing all of that. And let's see, I'm trying to decide if I want to put it down now. Oops, speak of the devil. Well, that's jolly. Holly was up here earlier. Yeah, you're looking for those, and I got rid of them just in time. All right, so do we want to use tape, or do we want to use glue? I think tape. But I'm trying to decide if I want to do it. I think I need to do it now, because it needs to be burnished. What did you get? Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, what I was saying is it needs to kind of burnish and bend with all the rest of it, so... Let's go ahead and put some tape. Oh, look, she found one. Oh. you have to. Okay. And let's do this side.
first these. And we really, these are going to be almost totally covered by mats. So, you know, I'm not going to fuss too, too much. And hopefully you will not even have these, but I want to show you this just in case you ever want to do this you know, on purpose as a decorative element. And one thing you could do if you really wanted it to be a decorative element is leave these hanging, do all your mats, and then fold them down so that they're on the outside, you know, over the mats. one at a time, but that's all right. Okay, I'm just going to fold that over and burnish it down. One thing you can do is just do that. Again, if you wanted those to the inside, you could. So now we're just going to burnish. Let's be real careful at this point. You've got quite a few layers and you do not want to tear any of them. burnished was nowhere near where it needed to be. your time. You don't want to rush this process. stomach growling. I do not know why my stomach's growling because I just had a good breakfast. <coughs> okay, now I need to mat the front and I have because if you did my last project you may have noticed that I did not use the signature sheet because I am going to use it here. I love the way that looks. Excuse me. All right, so I need a piece. 11 and... I really want it 12, honestly. 11, I'm going to go 11 and... Maybe 11 and 7 eighths, just to be on the safe side. So 11 and 7 eighths by... I'm going to start at 9 and a half. 11 and 7 eighths by 9 and a half. just going to first cut this um, header strip off so I get a better idea. That's going to be enough. I just, yeah, just need to take a little bit off. Actually, 
I'm actually at 11 and um, 15 sixteenths. I just want to take as little off as I can. good I'm gonna leave it there for now if I have to trim it again I will and what did I say nine and a half okay like I'm still just a hair too big on the height. I'm going to do 11 and 7 eighths, which is what I originally thought it needed to be. And you can see I originally took a little bit off the top, so this time I'm taking a little off the bottom. Yeah, I think that's going to be better. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, because I'm probably going to end up using this piece in some form on the spine. So I'm going to trim this in the same way, a little bit off the top, a little bit off the bottom. Actually, it looks like I already trimmed the top. Let's turn this around. There, just so they match. If I do take it around to the spine. Okay, so that's going to be the front. I think this, in some form, is going to be the spine. And then I'm thinking this will be the back. All right, so let me cut that. That's 11 and 7 eighths by 9 and a half. good spine too. Okay, so this will be our back piece. There. Okay, so we've cut our pieces for the outside mats. Now, what we want on the inside, I'm going to need a full mat here, and I'm going to do pockets here because we're going to put our notebook here and we're going to put pockets here. So what I want to do, let me grab, I'm going to use the black for my pockets. All right. Now I want, what I want is a pretty large pocket here to hold like brochures and stuff because um, I'm going to be taking this house hunting with me probably, or, you know, whatever. Work that I'm doing on my new house. And actually, you know what? Hang on, I wanna pick, I wanna make sure I pick the one with the best corners to be the front. That's gonna be this, this is gonna be the front. Okay, yikes, hit the light, sorry about that. So what I want is a pretty big pocket here, and then I'll put smaller pockets on top of it. So I think I wanna cut a piece Ten and a half by ten and a half by eight and a half. Okay, so I'm going to cut a piece ten and a half by eight and a half. And what we're 
we're going to do is we're going to score here and here uh, to form the pocket and then we're going to cut a diagonal here so it's a like a secretarial pocket but straight so i think i should get out my big scoreboard but i don't have it anywhere convenient right now so i'm just going to use my little one. all right so we're going to score half an inch slide it up if you only have a small scoreboard you can still use it you just need to adjust a little like i just did so you score as much as you can slide it up and score and we're we'll just going to do the same here how we're going to cut it and I think what I want to do here's my ruler that I can actually see I don't want things falling out so I, I want a fairly substantial amount on the side what I'm doing is measuring from the um, from the score Three and a half looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna make a mark at three and a half. Again, you do not have to be super precise. And then I'm gonna come up here and measure three and a half from this one. You could even eyeball this. You don't really have to measure it. The only reason I'm measuring it is so that I can tell you what I did. And uh, mark it on the back, really. I'll mark it on the front, which is not such a hot idea, really. Let's see, how's that look? I feel like it needs to be, that's too much. I think this is two and this is two. All right, it's too big. Okay, so we, we know from our marking. All right, so I'm gonna turn it over just so this time I'll have the marks on the back. And I'm gonna go to three, maybe even two and a half. I'm gonna try two and a half. All right, so two and a half, two and a half. Let's join those and see how that looks. I can tell already that I like this better. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a better pocket. Okay, all right, so what I'm gonna do is bring my cutter back over. Sure, I've got the correct one. And I'm going to line up that mark that I just made. What is that hitting? Why is that not laying flat? Oh, I see, because that's up like that. All right, well, ooh, I don't know if that's going to work in this cutter because I've got a, um, like a bump there. And I, I'm not going to try and fight with it. I will cut it. Well, my scissors. If you have a rotary cutter, this would be a good time to use it. You can even use a craft knife if that works for you. You can use your silhouette or cricket or something like that to cut these if you want. I actually did an album once a long time ago that I did entirely on my silhouette. And it was fun. The only thing is, I really enjoy cutting things out by hand. So, I haven't done it since. Alright, so there's that pocket. Now we're going to trim. that's going to go in like that. There's lots of room on the front. We could add another matching pocket 
or we could just do a straight across pocket. Usually when I make these, I do the matching one. This is so big, we could do, could do three even matching ones, or we could do another matching one and then do a straight on top of that one. Maybe that's what we'll do. So let's go to seven and a half by nine and a half. Let's cut a piece of that size and see how we like that. time we did two and a half inches so this time we'll do one and a half so we want to do one and a half and that was from the score mark so one and a, so that's two inches from the cut line from where the you know the edge This assembly together. I'm going to trim corners here. Take tape first if you want. And I need to burnish this one. I haven't done that. making this with a specific purpose in mind which is that I'm going to be house hunting and um, but of course you could adapt this for whatever purpose you'll be using it for you know, school or work or whatever and you could adapt these pockets to suit whatever that need is so this is going to go here this is going to go here and then um, we could do either you know maybe a maybe even an envelope a little square envelope something like that to hold small items like business cards and stuff that wouldn't fall out or just a straight across pocket we'll play with it okay so let's go ahead and tape these ahead and attach the smaller one to the bigger one before we put it in the book. So I'm just pulling back the tape, the back of the tape from just this corner so I can get it placed. Oh, that thunk was my air conditioning coming on. Hope it wasn't too loud. It's kind of a cloudy day, but it's hot today. Well, it's going to be hot for a long time now because I live in Florida. It's going to be hot until you know, probably mid-November, maybe the end of November. It depends. Some years it gets cool the end of October. Some years it never gets cool. Of course, cool for us is relative, of course. Okay. 
So now we have this. And I really feel like I want something there. But I'm not sure exactly what yet. Whatever it is, it's going to go on top of the mat because it's not going to go all the way to this edge and it's not going to be another one of these. So I think I'm just going to stop there. We're going to put it in the book and then we'll uh, worry about that later on. All right, so let me go ahead and again decide which side has the best corners. That's the side I'm going to want to use as my front. I feel like it doesn't really matter, honestly. That's kind of fluffy though. Let's see. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Okay. So I'm going to put this down like this. Get that out of the way so you can see. Alright, so just like that. And we're just going to do the exact same thing. We're going to Start in the corner, get everything lined up and square, and then lay it up. All right, so I'm just going to pull back the back of the tape from the corner, try and get it up there where you can see it. I'm lining it up pretty much right with the edge, maybe in a hair. So I'm in maybe a sixteenth from the side, and it's pretty much even on the bottom. Okay, let's get those. All right, that looks good. And again, we'll probably do something here. I just haven't decided what yet. All right, so that's good. All right, and here we are going to mat, and then we're going to put the band to hold our um, notebook in place. So, so here is my little, it's actually not a notebook, it's a notepad. But you could do a notebook and I will show you. So this is the pad I'm using. It's a little gridded pad. And if you want to do a note, say I'm going to do a a band like this and slide my pad onto it. If you were going to do a notebook that you were going to open and write in, you do a vertical band and slide your notebook this way, okay? Just in case you want to do it that way. All right. So I think what I need to do at this point is choose this mat so we can make that band. All right. So I think since we already cut the front and back, let's go ahead and put those on. Just get them out of our way. I'm going to use ground espresso, I guess. All right, let me see. These are the big sheets I have other than the cut aparts. So the only really big one I need now is here. And it's going to go behind that notebook. That might be cute. Behind the notebook. Or notepad, I should say. Or we have this piece. Oh, that's 
So I think I'm going to use that one. This piece is going to be the same size as the pieces that were on the cover. And that was 9.5 by 11 and 7 eighths, if I'm not mistaken. Although, actually, I think it needs to be a little less. Let's call it 9 and a quarter. 9 and a quarter by 11 and 7 eighths. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's ink that and get it down. Stress does come off on them, makes them dirty. Okay, there's that looking good. And so we need a fairly big piece for here. So in that pocket. And I think the map would go nicely with this. So for that, because it's going to come all the way to the bottom, it needs to be. 11 and 7 eighths. Actually, it needs, basically needs to be the same size, but I can cut some off the corner if I want. So that's 9 and a half by 11 and 7 eighths. So let's do that. Okay, that's good. I like that. All right, so then we need a piece for this pocket, and that doesn't have to be a full piece. This one's gonna be pretty big, because even if I put something on top, it's gonna be on top of the mat. So, ooh, my goodness, I'm sorry. All right, so this one is gonna have to be six and three quarters, or six and seven eighths by eight and three quarters, eight and seven eighths. Basically seven by nine. Right, so this is gonna go here, and what I'm gonna do is place it where I want it. And I'm gonna get a pencil. And let me grab no, I'm trying to find a small piece. Let's just grab this. All right, so I just want to put that there so I can see, and so you can see. And I'm just going to make a mark where I want to cut that. And where's that one? I feel like this is taller than it needs to be. Sorry, I keep hitting that light. All right, so then we're going to draw a line between these two marks that we just made. Good. Okay, 
Okay, that looks nice. Now, let's see. This is the piece that we just cut off from the birds. And I think we can use it. I think it's, is it big enough? I'm not sure it is. Mm -hmm. Have to be about there. Oh, not quite. Almost, but not quite big enough. Just wonder if I should use it anyway and just piece a little piece in rather than wasting a whole big piece. Just thinking if we put it in this way. Then we could do sort of, you know, cut it almost in half and put one half here and one half here with a seam. I think that may be the way to go. All right. basically done here. We just need to add our strip and then if we're going to put something there. All right, so I've got a lot of little scraps here. What I need is a piece that is two inches wide, top to bottom, and then however wide I need it for my particular notepad. Okay, so let's take a look at my notepad here. Earth should be eight and a half. I think it's a standard size. Yeah, it's eight and a half. So we're gonna make this eight and three quarters finished. So I need a piece nine and three quarters by two. Why do I want it a little wider? Maybe we'll make it two and a half. Yeah, let's make it two and a half. Two and a half by nine and three quarters. Nine and a half by two and a half. And score it at half at each end. Okay. And let's put some tape. And I'm going to straighten that up. mat this while we have it out. Oh. 
Perfect. I'll figure that out in a minute. Okay. Now, we need to figure out where we're going to put this. And this is how you do it. Okay, so take your book, take your pad, place your pad in your folio, your book, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to turn this. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, so I'm adjusting this sort of top to bottom and side to side so it's where I want it, right? And the top of this band needs to be maybe an eighth of an inch down from the top of the book. Finished. Okay. So my measurement is three quarters of an inch from the top and centered. That's pretty easy. Right? So what I want to do is place this here, centered, side to side, and then measure down three quarters of an inch. Maybe a hair shorter, maybe more like 11 sixteenths. That looks pretty good, except that it's upside down. Let's fix that. Check that if you've got a pattern paper that has a direction to it. I've got so much stuff on this desk. Just gonna lift. I'm holding it so it doesn't slide. Lift up one end and put it down. Once that one's down, the other one will go down pretty much straight. But you can still take your ruler, I'm kind of making sure it's straight on that text. Go. Okay. So that. Where's my notebook? I keep calling it a notebook. It's a pad. And then this will slide. Yikes. I don't want there to be too much play in this, otherwise it'll just float around in here and it won't be as secure. Perfect. All right, that is excellent. Now we have to decide, do we want some here? We've already cut something, although we do have, if, we, if I'd done that contrast, it'd be enough because you could see the points, but I do have a piece. I think we'll probably put something there. And let's decide, what about right here? I love the way this looks, but I know when I am out and about and using this thing, people are gonna be handing me business cards and I kind of just want a little pocket right there to hold those. So let's make that. I think, I think four inches wide finished by two and a half tall finished. So I need a piece three by five to make the pocket, and I have this. All right. So we are gonna score a half inch, and a half inch, and a half inch.
if you don't feel like you need this pocket, of course you could leave it off. Or if you feel like you need something else, like an envelope or something like that, then you could add that. go with this text again and then put a sticker on top. And it works. All right, so that needs to be two and three eighths by four and seven eighths. Press the glue on these stickers, so I always try to add some real glue to them. And I'm just going to center that, eyeballing it, give or take. said will be good for holding business cards or other little things that I might need in the course of my day. All right, I think that now we have to decide, I think, do we want a piece right here? I feel like I don't really want that there. I don't want that too busy, but I might want something here. I have to be very narrow, like half inch wide. By 11 and 7 eighths. Let's cut something. So I'm cut, first I'm going to cut this because it's kind of an off size down to two and a half. Okay now I'm going to cut it two inches wide and the piece that's left will be a half and that'll be what I need because it's too hard to try to cut something as narrow as a half an inch. I wonder if I want it just a hair wider. Let's go down just a teensy bit. Okay, let's see. How's that? Yep. Could even have been just a little wider, but I don't want it to get involved in the folding area of the page and then it might lift on me. And I'll just center that as best I can. Hi oh. Jolly, are you back to see what's going on? She's hopping up in the window to see who's trimming the bushes. There we go. Yeah, that gives it a finished look. I like that. Trying to decide if I want to do the same here 
or not. Probably should, huh? All right, I'm gonna cut a strip of the same thing. a little more finished. Okay. Speaking of finished, it's finished. Now, of course, you can add uh, whatever you want in the way of decoration, stickers, chipboards. Uh, you could add uh, spine charms, whatever you like. But that's the base, and that is done. I hope you enjoyed this little project. I feel like I futzed around a little bit with it, but I really like how it came out, and I'm glad I got a chance to use uh, some more of Safari, which I really, really love by Graphic 45. And that's it. I will see you next time. I have a beautiful collection for my next design team project, and I know you're going to love it. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share. Don't forget to visit Country Craft Creations. This is a design team project for Country Craft Creations and all of your supplies you can get there. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.